Hello. In this video, we'll be considering some of the issues surrounding traditional budgeting approaches to help us consider an alternative approach beyond budgeting, which considers the merits of actually not bothering to budget in the traditional sense at all. Organisations traditionally use budgets as a way of communicating goals and expectations to management. They form the basis of targets that can be used to assess whether or not an individual has performed well or badly and to encourage them to perform in such a way as to meet and beat those targets. Unfortunately, there are many issues associated with traditional budgeting. Let's consider some of these drawbacks to help us understand why beyond budgeting has its merits. Firstly, environments are generally unpredictable. Budgets are usually set at the start of the period. For them to be a useful target, the person who sets the budget has to have a reasonable appreciation for what the coming period is going to be like. However, in a modern environment where the scope of competition is often global, customers are global, and technology moves on at an ever-increasing pace, in many cases the environment for the next 12 months is not stable or predictable enough to derive targets that are likely to be challenging but achievable. In fact, the targets are likely to end up being set too high or too low. Either is demotivational. If a budget is set too tough, people give up. Or if the budget is set too easy, people relax. Thus, the very act of setting a target is likely to actually demotivate people in a changing environment. Secondly, budgets are time consuming and costly to prepare. In a competitive world, careful consideration needs to be given to whether the benefits of setting budgets actually justify this cost. It also potentially focuses management on a narrow activity rather than allowing them the freedom to manage the business more generally. Thirdly, budgets promote cost control rather than cost reduction. Provided budgeted costs are met, this is viewed as good performance, irrespective of whether actual costs could have been lower. Fourthly, budgets may threaten quality. Often, budgets are expressed in financial terms. The incentive is therefore to reduce costs to beat budget. However, this may threaten quality if cheaper alternatives are used that are not considered to be as good by customers. Budgets may stifle innovation. New ideas and opportunities may present themselves during a performance period. If these are not part of the budget, then they may well be ignored by management, even though they might be good for the overall performance of the business. Finally, budgets can lead to dysfunctional behaviour. Managers in their desperate efforts to hit budget targets may make all kinds of decisions that are not actually in the best interests of the creation of long-term shareholder wealth. For example, they may focus excessively on the short term myopia, they may cut back on training and research and development to reduce costs this year to hit a profit target. This is clearly not good for the long-term development of the business. They may try to manipulate results to make them look better than they actually are. This may make senior management unaware of problems. They may make decisions to ensure their performance metrics look good. For example, they may lease an asset rather than buying it to reduce the amount of investment on the balance sheet. This may or may not have been the best decision financially. So, it's fairly safe to say that traditional budgeting has its issues. Hope and Fraser, in 2003, came up with an alternative approach known as Beyond Budgeting, which suggested that traditional budgets actually hinder rather than help organisational performance. Simply ceasing to produce traditional budgets may sound like we're creating a worrying lack of control in the organisation, so let's have a look and see how Beyond Budgeting may work. Let's consider the rate in this paper. 
A traditional approach to budgeting for this pass rate might be for senior management to set a budget or target of say 90% as a target for teaching staff. Incentivize this by offering to pay a bonus based on a pass rate higher than 90%. Part of the problem in setting a target like this is that at the time the budget is set, no one knows what the quality of the students is likely to be and no one knows how difficult or easy the exam is likely to be. So at the time it's set, we have no way of knowing whether 90% as a target is too high, too low or about right. So, let's change our approach here and adopt a beyond budgeting style. At the start of the period, management and tutors might have a discussion clarifying what good looks like. In other words, discussing what should be the dimensions of performance that need to be given due focus. One of those areas might be pass rates. Management and tutors may well agree that pass rates are an important dimension of performance for Learn Signal. We may even discuss an aspirational target. For example, let's suppose the pass rate was 87% in the prior sitting. This might give us a feel for what we would hope to beat in the future period. It's important to note though that no firm target is set out at this point. Then, as teaching progresses, we can gauge the quality of our students together. This may then raise or lower our expectations for pass rates. Management will appraise the tutor's performance on an ongoing basis in light of what the unfolding environment shows us. When the exam paper is published, again we can reflect on whether the paper was unusually difficult or easy. Then, at the end of the period, we can discuss whether the tutor's performance was good or poor in light of the environment as we now know it to be. Understanding this environment may well involve benchmarking our performance against other learning providers. In short, a beyond budgeting approach might run like this. 1. Jointly decide the dimensions of performance that need to be targeted. 2. Ensure the employee has tools and support they need to do their job. 3. Head office should minimise interference and red tape unless absolutely necessary. 4. Actual performance should be appraised in light of the unfolding environment and corrective action taken on an ongoing basis. This may well involve benchmarking. And 5. Long-term targets are not used to guide performance or appraise it. This approach has several benefits. It removes having firm targets, which as we have discussed can be demotivational. It also encourages a responsiveness to the environment as it actually unfolds, rather than trying to adapt behaviour to hit a relatively arbitrary target. Overall, it should encourage the best possible performance in the circumstances. However, there are several drawbacks with the beyond budgeting approach. There is a lack of objectivity, perhaps, given that interpretation of performance is purely centred around opinion in relation to the environment. This may make performance assessment too dependent on particular individuals that are performing that assessment and their personal views. Other stakeholders may require forecast information to help them plan and make decisions. Often this information is based on budgets, however, in a beyond budgeting environment it is less likely to be readily available. Also, as with any change, there is likely to be resistance from people who prefer the status quo. Change requires resources, time and money, which may be in short supply. In summary, Traditional budgeting has plenty of problems which can potentially be overcome by using a beyond budgeting approach. Hope and Fraser originally suggested the idea of beyond budgeting, but it's since then been adopted by the Beyond Budgeting Roundtable, which is an independent research organisation that promotes the concept. However, beyond budgeting is not without its problems, 
which should be considered before adopting it as a new approach to performance management.